All right, good afternoon. Uh, if you all need any snacks or drinks, anything, feel free to get them during the training. So Catherine Terry is the lead on this, but we're gonna fill in and act like we know what we're doing exactly. <laughs> no, no. Um, so uh, that way we can go ahead and um, start a few things about Sedona. How many of you have never even been into Sedona? Okay, great. So one of the questions that we had was, you know, how do you even access Sedona? So, and you will get an, a copy of this PowerPoint. This was a PowerPoint presentation that was actually used with us when we transitioned to, to Sedona back in 2014. Uh, but you go to HTTPS SedonaWeb.com. And if you will go, if you have a device, if you don't, that's okay. Yeah, you can share. Terry Sue's nice to share. She's nice <laughs> Yeah. All right. We're good to go there? All right. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, we don't need. So one of the things that we recommend for you to have when you start getting into Sedona is to have like your resume or CV with or near you. So that way you can start, um, you know, being able to copy and paste some things over as well. So in order to log in uh, to Sedona, uh, we're looking at the member login. If you are a department chair or director and you evaluate other people, there's another login that Catherine can walk you through on how to log in to do that. But you're gonna uh, choose the member type. The account type is member, um, for those who have not been in there. And then your member ID is your username LU. Only mine, the, my name was too long, Nor TH, because my username is TH Nordstrom. So I'm like TH Nordstro. LU. Um, so try your username, LU, and then your first password is also your username, LU. It is not your email. You can try email. <laughs> Try your email. Did you? Whoops, I typed in the wrong thing. <laughs> oh, no. and then the password is the same. 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 Mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Mine will work, but. It's 10 and then the LU. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. If, if not, when Catherine gets here, she can give you, because she has access to that. We do not have access to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we may have to come back to this, to that piece when, when she gets back in here. So, um, We'll go ahead and, and go over kind of, um, we'll leave that log, log at, logged in, um, but some of the questions. So someone asked like, once you're in Sedona and you're putting in your CV and stuff, like can you print the CV um, that you create through Sedona? And the answer is yes. So you can create like a PDF version of your, um, your CV, you can also go in there and when you're looking at, if you're wanting to print it for something specific and you don't want certain things listed, you can go in and, and delete that out there just for that print as well. Um, and we'll talk about how to enter in professional development. Um, all right, this, how often does Sedona need to be updated? <laughs> so I think that's just a personal preference, but I highly recommend that you don't wait to add things. Um, so as you 
submit a journal or you go to attend a workshop, whatever it is mm -hmm. that you're doing, if you're advising students, so during academic advising, so any event as you go throughout your semester, go ahead and be adding those yeah. as you go. Yeah. So, and if you haven't, if you haven't started in Sedona, I think a good place to start is to take, if you have a current resume, is to mm -hmm. take that current resume and go ahead and add the things that are already on that resume so that it will populate into mm -hmm. Sedona. Yes. Yeah, and, and we'll check some things in Sedona in just a bit. Um, of things that you need to make sure is correct for, for Catherine's sake and, and she'll go over that. But yeah, uh, so our big, biggest thing with Sedona is time management. Um, and that's when I reached out to quite a few people who I call like kind of super users across <clears throat> campus of Sedona, um, they're like, don't wait till May um, because we have to have it current in May for those who have the faculty evaluation at the end of May. Um, so don't wait till May because you'll be spending a lot of time um, and then you'll get frustrated or you'll get in a hurry and you'll forget some things. So as Emily said, you know, if you can do it immediately, it only takes one or two minutes. So if you are, or once you get an email that you have been accepted at a conference to present or something like that, go ahead and uh, take, take a few minutes and, and fill that in um, because you won't remember everything. I think there were quite a few times because Emily and I were one of the first Four who went through Sedona as kind of the guinea pigs for the promotion portfolio last year. Um, and so we learned quite a few things um, that we, you know, we had kept our Sedona up to date, but there were still other things that we needed to kind of tweak and, and manipulate um, in there to, to fit all the promotion requirements. Oh, can I yes. Question? So if, let's say, like I have this friend who he went and went to a, a convention Mm -hmm. a conference and was work, you know, did a workshop. Where do we put that? We will tell you okay. that. Yes. Yeah. We're just going to give you some helpful hints first, and then we'll share where to put this information. Um, and a recommendation now that it's all digital, because um, when we started with here, you know, seven years ago, we had to actually do portfolios or you know, an electronic portfolio, not in Sedona. Um, so we recommend like some digital folder organization. So like, you know, take a folder in Google Drive um, and, you know, have it saved for kind of your faculty promotion portfolio. Um, that way um, you can have a backup in there. So if you attend, like say that you attended a conference and you presented, they gave you a certificate or you attended some type of certification class and you got a certificate, go ahead and digitally scan that in. You can go ahead and upload it to Sedona, but also have a backup like in, you know, some type of digital folder. Right. As would, well. And I would also say artifacts. So mm -hmm. if you had like an email or a note from a student or from a yes. supervisor, um, mm -hmm. you know, I would, I would definitely save some of those, so mm -hmm. some of those artifacts so that you can upload them. Yeah. Into your portfolio later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and with that, uh, kind of breaking down and we have went ahead and we've given the, this handout that we give when people are going up for promotion, which we'll do a couple of more of those sessions soon, <laughs> but kind of the different areas and where to put certain things. Uh, because that was after going through the first year, we kind of met with the, the committee and they're like, you know, what, what some of your thoughts? And I said, it wasn't that difficult because we had the materials. It was just trying to figure out where to put it because it's not clear cut in Sedona. Um, so being able to, to walk through those things. So when, you know, I kind of broke mine and you can do it however you want to, but for my kind of digital folder, I broke it down into categories. So I had like teaching, intellectual pursuits, service, and, and then like I also had administrative uh, requirements. So I kind of broke them down into those four buckets and started put, and I labeled like fall, you know, I started fall 2012, um, you know, spring 2013. And, so, and that way I kind of had those buckets. So, um, but anything, any artifacts that tell, you know, some of the tips that I found from another CTL is start early, which was said, be selective 
of what you want to do. Be organized, tell your story, which is where those artifacts will come in. So any thank you letters from students or um, when we get to the teaching category, we will kind of talk about like um, some of those assignments or other things that you have to do and realize that you don't have to be absolutely perfect, but just enough to show consideration, thought and effort at improvement, because that's where when you get to the promotion thing, you're writing kind of narratives around your teaching experience um, here. Welcome. <laughs> Better late than never. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we had started with kind of some of the uh, just some tips before getting into Sedona. That we would say. Um, Was everybody able to log in? No. no. Okay. 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 Yeah, Andy. Are you the everybody else? Mm -hmm. I will look up. Your yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, while she's looking that up, uh, the other thing that I highly recommend is just that. Uh, has been really helpful for me is when you get the course evaluation, taking a few moments to kind of do a kind of analysis of it. So what were your strengths from that, you know, looking at your course evaluation? What are some opportunities for growth? Um, because that will help you, because um, when you get ready to go up for promotion, you select like three classes or, that you are looking at over the years. And so how have you like, develop your own continuous improvement process for that class. So being able to to look at those and analyze those like here's where you know and based on you know the scores and student feedback here are some opportunities for me to grow because that's going to help you write your narrative when you get ready um, to go up for promotion. I think that's another thing that I had to go back and dig through <coughs> was um, past course syllabi. Mm -hmm. So you will have to show like three sections. So if you taught a course, you know, so I taught math, method, math methods, so I had to pick three syllabi mm -hmm. that showed. So like the 2000, fall 2017, fall 2018, fall 2019. Mm -hmm. And then you would submit that. You actually have to upload that as a, as, a, as a PDF file. Just had the syllabi. Yeah. They, they could look sort of similar. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Right. 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 And we'll show you today kind of where to put yes. that stuff um, as we go through here as well. Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, so another thing, so faculty growth, you're at the end of in May, um, you will kind of be evaluated on your faculty growth plan for this last year. So for those of us who were here last year, you put it in the end of May um, last year and your supervisor approved it. For those that were new, I think there was a, they did something like a new, for people who are new, like who, had, have you done a faculty growth plan? Okay. All right. So, so what will happen is it'll yeah. open up for you to add, I guess, your goals for mm -hmm. the coming year. And so you won't be evaluated on your goals per se, because you haven't been here a year to be evaluated. Mm -hmm. It'll open up for you to say, hey, here are my goals. Here's what I plan on doing this next year while I'm here. And then next year, you will go in and be evaluated on those goals that you and your supervisor have set. Yeah. And, and I'll, I'll show you the boxes, because we didn't have these nice little boxes um, when we started. And we had to do a lot of documenting. But now it's like a little paragraph that you write. So a recommendation that we have um, is to like go ahead and write down what you think your goals will be in, in, in like a Word document or a Google Doc around teaching, service, intellectual pursuits, um, if you have administrative goals um, and, and have that. And then throughout the year, I kind of do like bullet point. I keep that, you know, and like every month, I, I just schedule an appointment every month and kind of even though I'm putting things in or as I'm putting things in, um, you know, going through and making little bullet points of things that I'm doing to meet those goals because I that's the thing that you have to do in those boxes um, for your person to go through on the, the faculty rubric um, is to provide the evidence to support that you have done those goals. And there's been a time when one of the goals that we had listed, I didn't get to that year. However, my college had a different, we kind of shifted 
and I had to take a different route. So I was able to say, I did not meet this goal in this area due to this. And so I was able to provide some evidence to support that. Um, let's see. The other thing is note that CTL sessions do count. So when you come in here, um, and if you can't remember throughout the year, the CTL sessions that you attend, that's why we have a lot of times people sign in, we can go through and sort through our list um, and send you a nice little uh, list of the things that you have attended in the CTL. So when you're looking at intellectual pursuits, um, I just going to say this, I think the CTL is a great opportunity <laughs> for you to have some <coughs> professional development for free and we like to feed you. So <laughs> yeah. Anything else on that? All right. Want to talk about our the little Big slide set? Yes. So this uh, I think she said you pull up yeah is found on my list oh. under uh, Office of the Provost under Sedona. There's a video as well as a PDF of some slides. Um, it tells you everything from logging in. It will kind of go through it as to how to um, add information to it. So I think Andy it's, has sent you something to reset your password on your account. So um, hopefully you'll be able to get in. But you would log in through here. If you forget your password, um, you can let me know or there is a place on here to say you have forgotten your password and it will reset it. And I said if they're a department chair or director, then they can yes. contact you on how Correct. to Correct. access that. Um, All right. We'll just yeah. Go down. No. There you go. So once you log in, uh, here is your home screen. Kind of blurry up here. Yeah. Um, help is a fairly decent feature. I wouldn't say it's fantastic, but it is a fairly decent feature. Um, and if you ever click on multiple pages and are trying to get back, the easiest thing to do is hit home up here in this top corner. Mm -hmm. uh, but this should be what you see as soon as you log in. I think the next one is going to be about how to change the password. Hang on. I scrolled too big and now I don't like the PDF. We'll start over here. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So once you log in, Sedona generates passwords. So I, I, I have no idea what your password is. You're the only one who knows what your password is. But if it's something you would like to change as soon as you log in, you can click up in this password section and change it. Um, again, I can. I will not ever have your password. Sorry. <laughs> Profile. Uh, if you click up in this top corner. Go to the profile button and if you head to the next page this should be uh most everything that you can edit about yourself some people choose to do this some people do not um it's entirely up to you not necessarily required i don't remember hope if you all mm -hmm. try to do anything that with the uh with RTP. Originally, we put our teaching philosophy there, and that was not yes. the correct place. So, again, this would be <laughs> yeah. optional if this is something you would choose to yeah. put in here more than you're welcome to. Uh, so, we would ask that you would put in your title. We have a title when we build your account. And I know this would maybe surprise some of you. Anytime you would get a promotion of such, it doesn't necessarily change in Sedona because our systems don't talk to each other. And so mm -hmm. usually it's not until someone says, hey, I'm listed as an assistant professor and by now they are a full professor or something like that. They're like, okay, well, we can go change it. But when we run reports, we try and run it off what is in this other category and what we have and then kind of cross check to make sure your title is correct when we're reporting out, especially by you know, certain mm -hmm. levels. Academic degrees. If you log in and see that your highest degree is not actually your highest degree, if you will email me, that is something you cannot change. There is an administrator 
there was at one point an administrator for every college. That's not been kept very well, but something we're kind of looking into and changing. Um, but I can easily go in and change that. So if something is marked as your highest degree, and this is not your highest degree, if you will let me know. You can add degrees, but you cannot mark your highest degree. Who we should email? Me, yeah, Catherine.terry at Lisbon.edu. And I'll go in and change that for you. I don't know who it is. This is something I've recently inherited. I've been into it so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love it as much as you all do. I yeah. Love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So again, you can add your own degree information, but if it is the highest degree, I'll have to go in and certify that it is the highest degree. Um, Okay, credentials. If you have any credentials, so this, for instance, was Susan Gower. She's a CPA. Obviously, she would blog here that she's a CPA. There are lots of different licensing. I'm sure, you know, DA, Part B, anything like that would go in under this category. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's where we have our teacher license. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I might need help with that yeah. at some point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is memberships. It's not necessary. Okay. Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> memberships. This is yeah. usually the most fun. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, if you are a member of anything, so I'm sure several of you are members of multiple things, but it would go here. You can also log it. We'll get to it in a mm -hmm. place that you will log it in other. You know, because you may only be a member for a certain period of time, but uh, these are probably memberships that you maintain. This is not like, oh, I, for this year I was a member of AERA. This is something that you would maintain mm -hmm. uh, membership in. So professional organizations mm -hmm. and, yeah. Experience. We would prefer especially for new individuals to have the last five years of experience, even if they were not here on campus. Uh, that is kind of the rule of thumb in the past. So obviously as you are promoted or your title change, it would be nice for you to log that here. If you um, can though, we'd even like your drops before. Let's go. This will all uh, report out, out into a CV, which can be helpful. Uh, for a variety of things, mm -hmm. and we can show you that. I think that's at the end mm -hmm. as to what that would look like. So the more you have here, the less you will have to do on the back end in, re in reporting out a CV yeah. for different uh, different types of things. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you'll see a variety of boxes. Again, this is on your home page. You have research activities, service activities, experience activities. So all of those things you can enter from this home screen as well as teaching activities and what we call other activities. Uh, I can't remember how detailed it gets, so I'm going to go into just some basics on this before we get into it. So research activities would include articles, posters, presentations, um, grants, that kind of thing. Uh, service activities, there's a place for community service, there's a place for institutional service. So any committee that you would serve on here at the institution, whether that's a maybe a curriculum committee or you know the like, that would uh, get lumped here. Professional service, um, experience activities, we consider that uh, employment, obviously. Uh, consulting, and if you've had any other paid service type experiences while you've been employed here. Uh, let's see. Good thing is this is going into the teaching. Yeah. Which, okay. That's another. Yeah. Um, courses. A lot of times people will log in and say, oh, my course, you know, the courses I taught in this semester were not loaded or that semester were not loaded. There could be a couple of reasons for that. One, <coughs> they are uploaded after the semester is over for a variety of reasons. One, it may be that the course gets canceled or that the instructor changes or this, that, or the other. So we don't load them until after the semester is complete. Two, if you co-teach with someone, even if it's a 50-50 split, whoever is marked 
as the teacher of record is the one whose course information will be automatically uploaded. So if you are not marked as the primary instructor or the teacher of record, you will have to manually enter your course information. It will not get loaded for banner. So it would only be one individual per course that gets loaded from banner soon to be nexus. Um, <clears throat> so that's the other issue. So if it is in the new code file and you don't see it, you may check with the person you uh, taught with and see if it's appearing in their their account. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you'll have to manually manually add it. The teaching activities that that when we get to that one, that was really heavy for promotions. That's that's one of the areas that the the committee will look at. <laughs> yes, yeah. And that's I would say too. That's because most everybody here has a load in teaching of some sort where you know the amount of research we all do is different and we're kind of just now truly truly branching out in that field and aren't exactly sure how to evaluate that so mm -hmm. i think as as that changes mm -hmm. we're going to have some significant changes yeah uh, in the donut yeah. as well to track that five of information yeah all right oh, okay it. so that's a good service okay this is where you would log in your community institutional oh. Uh, professional service. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so here you can see these are all college, how she logged on college. But um, it, tell, it asks for your role. So were you like the chair? Were you a committee member? What level of participation did you have? You can also, if you have been on a committee or have some type of service that expands, let's say, five years. You can fill it in one time, select all five years, and it will populate, you know, a single line for all five years. So you're not having to go in year by year by year mm -hmm. and say, I was a member of this from 16, 17, and now it's opening 18, and then 18, 19, and 19, 20. You can select that when you're creating that first record, so you're not doing that. Well, mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So right there's where you would select the year. Mm -hmm. and be able to go from here again these slides are on my listing so yeah you're not gonna mm -hmm. die and i'm available by email yeah and this, this is really time. helpful like for you to get and like work through some of these areas because i'm it'll go to where you're yeah. like oh i can't remember how to log that because i only do it twice a year right once a semester and <clears throat> understood i even have to go back in and look at those yeah slides. uh yeah. <laughs> I get a degree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's professional development. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, let me say this. If the conference is not listed, you can enter in that line. A lot of the ones that people typically attend, mm -hmm. the same thing with like journals. If it's not in there, you can send an email to me and I can have it added, or you can even petition to have something added and an email will come to me or someone in your department about adding it. Um, but if it's not listed, there's usually a blank where you could enter. I will also say, too, uh, some of the, I guess, selections are self-explanatory. Obviously, here, international, national, regional, state, local. That's pretty self-explanatory. Sometimes they're not. You're like, what does TBR mean? I don't That might be one I've made up. I don't even know what that means. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. If you hover over, you know, like this word, if it were that word you didn't know, it will usually pop up with the dialogue box that tells you in detail what that actually mm -hmm. means. And so there are a lot of times people are like, I have no idea what this is. And I'm like, I can't remember what that is. Let me go on and hover <laughs> and I'll be able to tell you what that is. Yeah. So hovering um, in Sedona can be very helpful. Mm -hmm. okay. That's a consulting. Mm -hmm. okay. Teaching. Teaching. Oh. Other activities. So these other activities would be anything, you know, awards. <laughs> some type of scholarship, mm -hmm. that type of thing, or honor that you would have received. Okay. Research. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think maybe this is where it's yeah. high. Uh -huh. like, what is CPP? And I can't really tell you right now what CPP is. But, but once you hover, yeah. mm -hmm. um, it will tell you, tell you what it is yeah. as you add it. And again, if 
like in this instance, if the journal is not already in there, it will send an email to me that you petitioned that journal for it to get added into the system for the future. So you're only having to add it one time the next, it's in that drop down menu where you're selecting it every time and not having to fill it out necessarily every day, uh, every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I am just fine. You are good. <laughs> Okay, CVs. So this is where I was saying the more you put in, it is a pain in the rear to add it all. But the more you do, <laughs> the more helpful the system can be for you. I should also say, not that we would want any of you to ever leave this institution because we love you. If you did go somewhere else that had to know that your account can be transferred over. Mm -hmm. uh, they hold on to your records actually indefinitely, which is surprising to hmm. me. Uh, we've also had people who have you know, left and moved somewhere and come back, and it's all still there. So work not wasted. Mm -hmm. um, they're also happy to export and provide you a bunch of stuff. So while it is labor intensive in the beginning and not necessarily the most fun thing to do, it can be helpful. Yeah. Uh, so the CV, I think it actually shows yeah. an example. Mm -hmm. We have a generic CV template already built into the system. So when you click that button, this is what <clears throat> pops up. You can export it as a PDF. You can export it as a Word document. You can print it directly from here. You see these red X's. You can say, hey, I don't want that to be included. Delete those off before you've ever exported at all. Um, you also are able to, if you want to create your own template and say, hey, you know, this might be nice for you, but we're, you know, my department, we do it different, or my field, we do it different. When I apply for a grant, it needs to include this, that, and the other, not, not this. And we can, I can work with you in customizing those. But again, it pulls everything from your account already in here, so you're not formatting and adding and, and doing. So it's up to date as you put it in here, it will report out uh, this way. Yeah, template. template builder. <laughs> use the template builder to create your own TV. <laughs> so I can I never use that. that. Yeah. Uh, and well, a lot of people, when they are applying for grants or something mm -hmm. of the like, it has to be just yeah. so and instead of trying to create their own and manipulate it we'll mm -hmm. just start here uh, so that the one that you just saw is actually the example cv template is the one that is limited to everyone's but you can create your own um, especially if you know you need to do it on a regular or semi-regular basis mm -hmm. again you can do it in pdf or word when you export it Oh, yeah. This is the other thing. You have, when you log in, there's membership information and it has like your first name, obviously your last name, when you were hired, if you're tenure, tenure track, non tenure track, uh, that type of thing. If you were to see that something on here was inaccurate, again, you can email me and I can change it. It's not something you yourself can change, um, but I'm happy mm -hmm. to change it for you. And when you have college administrators, again, they will be happy to change it for you. I hope, I guess when you all go into, the one thing I would say about, um, can, you, yeah. can you just log in? Yep, I am. <clears throat> We're having, I guess, another training about performance evaluations about censuses too. I mm -hmm. can't remember because we got yes. canceled. Yes. When you all do your evaluations on the self evaluation tab, mm -hmm. you will see. Oh, well, yours looks different. Than mine. Okay. You will see. <laughs> well, this uh, is for new. This is the one for new faculty. Okay. You will see your evaluations. You are able to export them, but the only thing that will be in those exports yeah. are your own comments and your own ratings. It will not have the ratings of your supervisor and dean. And that is a flaw that we can fix for $25,000 if anyone wants oh. to write a check today. So in order to get around that, when it comes to evaluation time for RTP, individuals email me and I will export it year by year because I, since it's, I'm the administrator, mm -hmm. have access to exporting your um, your full evaluation, which has your uh, supervisor and mm -hmm. the comments, because that's what you need for RTP. So you can try with all your might, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. But mm -hmm. that is the way it is. And I just wanted to say that is my perspective. We we have what we we have purchased a college, excuse me, a department level membership. So if I wanted to see something at that different level, it's twenty five thousand dollars to have a college level membership. And so we decided the few features that it would provide us is not worth. You will, I mean, you will be able yeah, to see your comments from your supervisor. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you can't see them. Mm -hmm. You get to see them, you know, as soon as they're open and released. You just don't get to export them uh, in a way that's really readable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she'll gladly, if you just reach out to her. I, and I'm pretty quickly yeah. about mm -hmm. her to get around. I understand mm -hmm. you will need it. And, yeah. Um, I think this year we had 26 people apply. Mm -hmm. So we want to talk about this piece and then we can go into like sure. promotion stuff. Sure. So yeah. um, evaluations will open. I'm going to go back to home. Really, quite frankly, soon. Uh, when you log in, you will hit that self evaluation tab, just, just like you did. And um, in this self evaluation drop down, you will see, I guess it'll say 19, 20, mm -hmm. or no, 18, 19. Uh, evaluation and goals mm -hmm. and so you will complete that information about you you will have until the end of may to get that completed mm -hmm. um, you will then meet with your supervisor at some point the sooner you get it done your supervisor may even meet with you in may but depending on how quickly everyone gets it done i know this would surprise you the other downside with having this account is it is one big off switch so I cannot say, okay, um, there's him in the arts, y'all are all done. Go ahead and move to the next step and business, you're not, you will have to leave your time. It's one big off on switch. So everybody's evaluations is, are on and they'll turn the switch and they're all off. I can't customize who can go back and edit and that. So what typically happens is we uh, leave them open for a certain period of time. I send several emails to those who have not completed it and just say, hey, you have until this day. After this day, it gets shut off. It gets shut off. Supervisors then have access to all of their evaluations. And then once that whole evaluation period is over, I will turn the system back on for those individuals who never completed it the first time. There's just no other way to do it. So we're, we tried really hard to have everybody complete it the first time. We have not had everybody complete it the first time. Uh, but we are working on that, so yeah. um, that's how it works. That's unfortunate, mm -hmm. but um, it is what it is. So as you're completing this, Right. I don't have one. I don't really. Oh. Have anything. You right. don't have you, anything yet. Yeah, there's nothing okay. yet. Yeah. Because there's there's nothing been released. Yet. Okay, I yeah. haven't yet. It hasn't been released yeah. yet. So when it's August, 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 right. August, correct. August, yes. Correct. correct. Okay. Yes. No. No. Yeah. When it is time, you will get. Yeah. Okay. So, I was, I was gonna, yeah. Luckily, I have this. This is what I have to go in. Right. Yes. So you would meet with your dean and say, okay, how much? Time you, you know, for Tim Boyce, you expect that I'd be teaching. Here are my goals. Here's what I think I need to meet it. And then you'd work on that together, especially the first time. Yeah. Once you do it the first time, typically you know that your teaching load or the, you know, won't change percentage wise from year to year, though it might if you get more of a grant or have some reassigned time for the department to do something else. So um, the first time in setting up those is especially. It's supposed to add up to 100. It is supposed to add up to 100%. <laughs> yeah. I know we can all probably add up to 200% right. around here, yeah. but it's only supposed to add up to 100%. Yeah. And if you, if you don't have administrative responsibilities, then you can put zero and put NA for those two things. And then you would hit submit. Then you yes, would go. and then the very important part, submit. Uh, it will save your changes. So even if you don't mm -hmm. submit, if you're not done, you think, oh, I'm not done. Mm -hmm. You can go out and come back and it will save your changes. Once you hit submit, you're done because you're not going to be able to make any more changes. Yeah. So don't hit submit until 
you're ready to submit. Yeah. I was going to show like when it comes back for like the next year. So now when you're getting ready to, to go through, so it'll show you like different things that you've done throughout the year yeah, as so well. It'll close that in as mm -hmm. you are answering questions. It will close <clears throat> all of this information about you in from what you've already yeah. done. So like, so for this particular year, my uh, teaching percentage was 30%. So then I listed a brief summary of my accomplishments and then a brief summary of course evaluations and then my own self-evaluation for that particular area. I and should that, say that too, yeah. and you might have missed when you do the RTP information. When you see your courses built in or you add those courses in that you, you've created, it would be very helpful at that very moment in time to add your syllabi and to add your course yes. evaluations. Mm -hmm. While yeah. you're there and while yeah. you're doing it, it is mm -hmm. very simple. Then it comes to the step where you made it for RTP and it's already there. You're not mm -hmm. having to go back and find them. Wow. Um, so as you're on there to validate that your mm -hmm. courses actually got built in right and they're accurate and that's what you taught, it'd be nice mm -hmm. to go ahead and do that just to yeah. check that box. Does everybody know how to find their course evaluations? Um, not really. Not really. Okay. okay. <laughs> Brian. Perhaps the session. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's also in my lips. My lips down in that <laughs> faculty homepage. Yeah. And then if you scroll down, there's usually like this little image. I think it says yeah. Yeah, course, course evaluations. evaluations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I and you can export it to PDF. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very intuitive once yeah. you get to it. Yeah. So um, it'd yeah. be different that end. Um, yeah. And obviously, for you, mm -hmm. it should be a different system. But, yeah. Uh, and, and it'll like when you're doing your evaluation and stuff, <coughs> it'll go through and it'll pull from your CV, which is why it's really important to kind of update that before you go in. And so like I have like all my conference, sorry, <laughs> conference presentations. So I had like 10% for intellectual pursuits, what I did, you know, service, and what I did. So that. only you and your department chair and your dean are mm -hmm. able to see this information. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And me. Yeah. But if I'm being honest, can they get on there and they can see it? <laughs> <laughs> she has all the time. I, do, I you can. Have so much time to do it. <laughs> I can get on there, but I can tell you, yeah. even when I export it for people for RTP, I have yet to look at one line of anybody other than to make sure I have the actual year right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. So that's where you'll go in May um, in order to do your evaluations. So, and then you have to, you have to wait for the comments to come back. So that's always fun. I think. How do you, how do you edit? edit. Well, I'm just looking at, at mine yeah. here. I'm not sure. Everybody has. So, so it's yes. not on, yeah. it's off. Yeah. So, so let's you go. Are to Once the new ones have gone, Okay, I'm going to walk through that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'll, I'll navigate this. All right. So we want everybody to go, if you'll hit your home button and go back to your home screen, mm -hmm. we're going to add this session to your, yeah. <laughs> to, to your Sedona. Uh -huh. so, <laughs> so if you will go to credentials, and then professional development. I don't have I don't have my detail stuff listed. And then that the right hand side if you go to add and you can go to type of activity and if you hit the scroll down button, it's gonna give you some different choices that you can mm -hmm. select from. So I'm gonna do the professional seminars workshops. Mm -hmm. It says what preferred for CTL activities or tasks. Um, that's, what, that's one thing. That's one question I've had. Is yeah. Which, which of these is preferred for A logged CTL activity stuff? is preferred. What? A logged activity is preferred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and it, it, I think it depends because, you know, Emily and I were talking about this when we were working on our promotion portfolio because we present a lot together when I was in College of Ed. 
but we may like she may have put it somewhere in in her CV, and I may have put it somewhere else, but it was logged, you know. And yeah, so I think that's whatever you and your you know if your college or department has something specific. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna do this. Do you uh, professional. Yeah. Okay. And then for the conference e event, I don't see if there's. You can see if you scroll down, there's mm -hmm. a lot of different choices. I have a Sedona Web Training Conference. Is that what this is? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Sedona Conference. Do you have Sedona? I don't have that on mine. Hmm. You have the Center, is the Center for Teaching mm -mm. and Learning so in there. Is the University Center for Teaching and Learning is in this? There is. There is. Where's that? So I'm not seeing I don't have it. So there is another one. I have Center for Teaching and Learning, Lipscomb University. Uh -huh. I, don't I don't even have that one. <laughs> so everybody's is yeah. different depending on how we've entered it in. Yeah. Hmm. Could it? You shouldn't. So, yeah. So find one that you feel like fits. Yes. There you go. And if not, I'm gonna I'm gonna add it to the list here. No, I just, yeah, I don't have that as an option. So I want to add it to my list. Yeah. So it was 2019. So we can just type in mm -hmm. something else. Mm -hmm. like. Yeah, I I did on the line Sedona training. Right, and then click on the 2019, and then. I did 2018, 2019, since it's this academic year. Um, this was a local. We are in Tennessee. And the great city of Nashville. And then if you want to put like a little thing. Yeah, I usually pick, I usually put a comment just mm -hmm. so, and it'll show some, mm -hmm. of, some of the comments will show up in the table. Sometimes they don't, but it helps me to remember mm -hmm. kind of what, what we learned. And so you might put Sedona RTP mm -hmm. portfolio training. Mm -hmm. And then hit save. And then it'll automatically say that and mm -hmm. then you can always go back and edit mm -hmm. if you needed to edit something yeah, right. if you click on the the manage, manage. you could add a file mm -hmm. so this is helpful especially like if you're doing a conference presentation or you write an article you can actually mm -hmm. attach a pdf file mm -hmm. to your portfolio yeah which is really nice yeah. um, I, especially for organization that way if you have to go and actually find that it's all in one place mm -hmm. yeah. and put in the cp hours and all that yes yeah, so Just check that box yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if you go back and hit edit you can do the cpe the hours mm -hmm. just is this one and a half mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> <laughs> That's on development too. Yeah. I should also say the individual who created Sedona, this is not their full time. <laughs> this is like their side project. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Matt, if you want to come up with another side project, I'll invest it. Because <laughs> uh -huh. you have time. So as you go in and add those. Yes, and it'll be in order by the date, like by the date. Um, sometimes, it's, sometimes it's a little frustrating because there's like things that maybe when I, I just, I like it in order and sometimes mm -hmm. it just happens to be in order by like the year instead of like March, April, May, those kind of order by the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you, and then if you want to, if you just click on in the upper right hand corner, if you click on CV, just to see what you already have there, it'll, Kind of give you an idea 
of what your CV currently looks like. And again, each each college, I think, does something a little bit diff different mm -hmm. in terms of where you put items. So you may want to check with your department on mm -hmm. where they want certain. Yeah. So uh, a question about, um, what's, so I'm, I'm hearing there's flexibility here, but also from your experience, when you came up to a, a point where it was being formally reviewed, yes. the flexibility kind of got a little more stiff. Um, and things were like, you know, it doesn't go there, it goes here and all that stuff. Right. So, um, so what we just did, the exercise we just did of entering a new activity is a bit of a pain. Mm -hmm. So if I, um, you know, I keep track of all my CTL sessions, thus far my approach has been to create one activity and I have a Google Doc that have all my CTL sessions mm -hmm. pasted, into, pasted into a single activity mm -hmm. and I just have the dates and the, the, the activity I went to um, because I'm lazy yeah. <laughs> and don't want to create 20 activities when I can just create a single act professional activity and just dump mm -hmm. my entire like schedule for what I attended. Thoughts, feedback yeah. about that approach. Now, there have been times that I've done that on, on certain things to, you know, like especially if it's a continuous thing. Um, because then if you like mark the number of hours, you know, that's going to say the, the, the pieces of you have to have certain things. That's the uh, RTP requirements mm -hmm. and not necessarily the, your CV requirements. Okay. So that's like where your syllabus needs to go and your course evaluation and the assignments. So those are the things that we didn't know where to put the first year. And we sat down and kind of worked through and mapped out with RTP. Right. I, I will say for the process, just it was overwhelming because mm -hmm. it hadn't been done before. So mm -hmm. we sat down and we basically made an outline yeah. of everything that needed to go through. And we sat down and talked, there were four of us, mm -hmm. but we talked through what needs to go in each section. Um, and so now you actually have this mm -hmm. um, that I think explains maybe like <coughs> an outline form. So if you're thinking of what to be entering for RTP purposes, if you follow this outline, mm -hmm. then you'll be able to add those things. So going back to, to your question about dumping everything in, I do think it depends maybe on your faculty growth plan, because when those tables populate, mm -hmm. it will show like how many different activities you've done or how many different service hours, right. you know? Mm -hmm. So I think it just depends on a little yeah. bit on what your your goals are, mm -hmm. and and if and how it's displaying those goals. Right. So that makes and sense. you can play around with that, like through looking at your CV, through looking at what populates for those those goals. I'll say at the university level, um, we don't use this as much as I think we're going to be using it. Mm -hmm. So uh, with us moving more into research, there have been times. Um, There have been times they've we've had you know the faculty senate or someone say hey let let us know all the research faculty did between this time and this time and i send it to them well it's only as good as people have logged it mm -hmm. and so if it's not logged obviously it's not there and, that, and they know that and i know that and mm -hmm. you know but as we move forward i think there will be times we use it for those purposes more often but let me tell you what in the beginning there had been the suggestion that every time a professional development activity, this is all because SAC CSC wanted to know how much we spent on professional development. Every time you logged one, you were supposed to put how much it cost. Yeah, so I each one of them would have had to have been separate. So obviously this wouldn't have been free. So you put the cost of zero. Well, if you went to conference, you literally had to add up everything you spent for that one conference and put in that number so we could report out budget-wise, how much we spent as a university wow. on professional development, mm -hmm. because everyone's department doesn't log professional development the same way. You know, everybody doesn't have what we say buckets the same buckets. You know, it might be, oh, well, the dean's covering this trip versus these operating funds. We have a little extra, we're sending someone here. So it doesn't all get logged the same. So we can't really tell you as a university what we spend on professional development. Now, I don't see us going there because that's 
not realistic, um, I think there's probably a happy medium. And I think you doing it the way you're doing it is just fine. I would just say mm -hmm. when you're meeting with your dean or your department chair or supervisor, they know to look further into that one line item because you may have gone to 20 sessions, so it's only appearing one time. I'm trying to think what we have told. Um, so, I mean, I think there's a couple places. If it's a, like an assignment from your college, this is for College of Ed. This is what we do. So, if you would go to teaching and do teaching activities, I think that is what we have to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm teaching and then teaching activities. I know that's where I have put, we do rookie teacher visits for teachers. We do um, portfolio advisors for our graduating seniors. No, so I do it as a semester. So I think that's what I did. Yes. So I would say, so there, there may be a time that I, I'm supervising our seniors in the fall semester, but not necessarily in the spring semester. So I would put fall 2018, I was a student portfolio advisor and I would log that. And that was part, but that was part of my, that was part mm -hmm. of teaching responsibilities. Whereas may, if I'm doing some type of service, then I would log that as a service activity. Mm -hmm. But the part of the class, I think in social work, like our students are doing their field based thing and we have Right. But that's part of a course assignment. Right. So does that get, does that go into teaching, teaching activities? Teaching so every mm -hmm. time they go to visit a community uh, supervisor, they, yeah. they log that into their. I mean, they could do it about the semester. Right. And I, I would do that by semester. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and then I might do the approach where here's my log mm -hmm. of when I went and did those things and I'd mm -hmm. make that an attachment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, so and I don't, so with pharmacy, we've had practice, you know, because a lot of them have practice sites. I don't know if that applies to anyone in PA or not because how you log those practice hours. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I'll go back and look. I can't remember now how. So is that where we would put like if you're on a heat system, mm -hmm. you put that mm -hmm. there? Maybe it just, I can see myself could add so many files. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. So maybe just add like an abstract if you're the chair mm -hmm. or add like what would you do? Well, and I would say you don't necessarily have to add files for everything. No. Mm -hmm. I think that I didn't. Right. The, the files that you would want to add yeah. for sure are going to be attached to your courses. Mm -hmm. So you're going to want, um, so if you look on the, on the handout right here for every, for the courses that you teach, you'll want to add your course syllabi. Um, you'll want to do um, your um, an, a sample assignment. So if you have your students, like we do case studies. So if we have a case study, then I upload a sample case study there. Um, mm -hmm. And then, of course, your course evaluations. So mm -hmm. I think hopefully yeah. that people Yeah. So, so how I got there, when I was at home, I went to teaching schedule. And this is Matt Rabine does this for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as Catherine said, at the end of the semester, it's not, you know, once grades are submitted and everything that's gone through, the, a few weeks after that, your the courses that you taught during that semester will be populated. Mm -hmm. And then what you can do is go in and manage them. And you can see right here what what Hope did right here. And this is nice. This is what we did not have. And we were mm -hmm. like, we don't know where to put this. Mm -hmm. So we had to do just a tap, like we had to have the other category and have a bunch of attachments. attachments. Mm -hmm. But now it is already in here. And if you see the little codes right here, you can attach your course <coughs> syllabus right there. Mm -hmm. You can attach a, a couple of student assignments mm -hmm. and then you can attach your course evaluation. Mm -hmm. So once you download those course evaluations, you save it as a PDF mm -hmm. file and you can upload those. Yeah. And then again, like a case study assignment is one of our major assignments. That's one that I would mm -hmm. add as a PDF file to show as evidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the things that I would recommend, um, so 
you know, obviously recommendation, take your CV, start putting that information in. So then when prepping um, your, for your promotion, taking your courses and uploading, and this was from fall t or spring 2013. So this was, a, so I wasn't gonna go way back then, but this was one of the courses that I used for my promotion. I uploaded the course syllabus um, there. Then A1 is like the course value. No, that's <coughs> not. Oh yeah, it's we assignment. changed the, yeah, assignment. Um, yeah, so a student assignment of some sort and then another student assignment. Um, and then A3 is the course evaluation. So, um, and, it, and we walk you through kind of, you know, for this particular section, A1 and A2 are the student assignments and the official course evaluation will be the A3 that's on there, assignment three that's listed. So that way, because when they go to pull this information, they don't see Sedona like we see it. They get like it all dumped. All these files. Right. All these files kind of dumped. So we had to figure out where to play, which is what we worked with, with the committee in order to figure out where to place. Which, would you all say it's better than putting the binder together? Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's painful, but. but however, I will say I was nervous, so I have a binder. Yeah, I do too. I have a binder as well. Of course you do. <laughs> we, we put a binder together just in case something. Yeah. Well, we were the guinea pigs. Yeah. So. But I, I do, I mean, I do feel like now the way that, I mean, I think you were the one who went in and put all those codes in for mm -hmm. us, which thank you, because mm -hmm. now you will know, like, there's a yeah. certain place for your documents yeah. and your evidence. Yeah. So. But something that you guys can start doing to prepare now when, when a course is over is to take do and it. do your syllabus, uh, pick out a couple of assignments that you want to maybe highlight in case that is a course that you want um, to for your promotion portfolio and then your course evaluation. So that, you know, and, and like I said, it's right here and you guys will have access to that. The other thing, um, major thing would be the other category. The other category. Mm -hmm. Linda Walsh is getting their pharmacy tracks their practice hours under the teaching activities and logs it as a type of activity is assurance of learning and then they just put the number of hours for that semester. Okay. Yeah, but that's a category, the type of activity assurance of learning and then the semester, the course, and the hours they spent, the contact hours. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and it may be different. So I would just say, y'all need to come up with your course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we don't have any of those <clears throat> courses. On this drop down course. Well, but y'all don't have a, you do have a completed course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would have expected at least one. I mean, we were there were a lot of co-listed courses in our curriculum, so but at least one that we were listed. At least between the two of us, we should have at least one course there. Yeah. 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 You don't have to, mm -mm. I guess is the answer. Yeah. We, no one really goes back to look at it until you submit mm -hmm. for RTP, so um, that would be up to you. But my thing would be, if you're doing it, you might as well, in case for some reason something changes and you decide you want right. to do this, then you're mm -hmm. not trying to go back three years and find and find it. Right. Yeah. And, and so another thing that might happen, depending on where you are in the process, it might be that you taught a course, <coughs> maybe you have administrative duties and you're teaching, and you only taught a course twice when it's time for you to be evaluated, mm -hmm. you can use those two and justify why you didn't have mm -hmm. the third one. Right. So like, so again, I taught a math methods class. So I had three mm -hmm. course syllabi that I could upload. Whereas <coughs> I think Hope had in her, she had taught education courses, but she only had two syllabi. So she was able to use those two syllabi and then explain mm -hmm. why 
right? Yeah. Because or the role changed from teaching to or you move colleges or your positions <laughs> right. on campus right. like three times. So <laughs> you're all over the place. Two years. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so, it's not hard, and that, that no. part's not hard. Everybody has yeah. to sell by. It's real easy to upload. Right. So I, I suggest uploading it. But yeah, again, and then that way, if if it's there later and you're going through you and you don't want to see it there, then you can go in and eliminate it if you want, but you don't have to. Just like on a personal front, mm -hmm. do you guys upload a syllabus, a student assignment, everything at the end of the semester for every class, just in case you end up losing that class? I do now. Okay. Now that we're in Sedona. I, I did for the. I would say anyone that's done RTP <laughs> would tell you that very thing. Be like, yeah. I wish I had done that. Yeah. It was all fresh and I had it right there. Yeah. Just going back to find it yes. has proven to be a challenge. The same thing, we have not always used a donor for performance evaluation. So this last cycle, I said, hey, I can, I think it's five years, mm -hmm. and I can provide you four years because we've used a donor for four years, but that fifth year, right. you're mm -hmm. on your own. Well, they ended up all working out and it was fine, but. It's nice that it's already in there and you're not going yeah. looking for it. Yeah, because I had to go Tardy. to Deborah's office right. to get a copy of mine because I had my copy, but I did not have the one that Candace had signed. So, yeah. But, yeah. Okay, so the other miscellaneous, so if you go to the top of your menu and go to other and then hit miscellaneous, this is where you're going to be updating <coughs> several RTP documents. Mm -hmm don't have to worry about that as much right now, but we do want to make people aware of it because this is where I was saying like, as you're completing a semester and you're looking at a course evaluation, you know, you're going to have to write narratives about certain components. So about your, you know, teaching responsibilities about, you know, your intellectual pursuits. And so that's something that's really helpful if you kind of you know, think through these things that you're going to have to write about at some point. And that's what we tell people. Uh, we'll do another like RTP training um, next month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if you want to come back for that, you can. Um, but for the people who are going up for promotion in the fall semester, for them to get a head start over the summer and, and things that we recommend for them to start working on. Um, but you know writing some of that we have things like you know this is where like i have a student like some student thank yous in a pdf that i just collected over the years and put it in there a teaching philosophy mm -hmm. there wasn't there's not a category so you have to create your own teaching philosophy category yeah. and other because that's part of the rtp process mm -hmm. yeah so that's a thing where you just add yes you mm -hmm. add the category you just, yeah, yeah. Okay. you create it yourself and this was another thing that after going through this Catherine helped us go through and add these different categories as well so it should be a drop down yeah it's a drop down so like when you let's see go to add yeah and then type of activity so a lot of the different ones you'll see so let's just say that I want to put my CV because you have to also include your CV so you can get the PDF which sounds weird they yeah. can't they can't see your cv so you actually yeah. have to download your cv save it as a pdf and upload, upload it, it to the to the other category yeah. Yeah. wow yeah you think they get a commission every time they log in and log out? <laughs> you should actually see what rtp is it is yeah very it is i didn't know that until like perry showed me and i was like just the number files. of files per person and it doesn't label like how you label it in here it's completely random from, you know from the yeah, so then I can, uh, you know, I can save it and then I can manage and add my file here. So it's, again, it's nice that the categories are there and you can just find them in there. Mm -hmm. um, and I will say, I know that some of the colleges have different categories. Mm -hmm. So again, your college may have something else that they want to want you to add to that other category. And, and one of the things like just sitting out and talking through things like, oh, like, you know, you are like, oh, I didn't think about rookie teacher visits, you know, just talking to other people in your department um, about it. And um, even like, you know, we sat down and talked through a lot of things like, oh, I didn't think about that or I didn't think about that as we went through. I think all of us are pretty humble in the things that we do, but if you start thinking about all the many things that you do across campus, whether it's academic advising for students, um, you're, you're doing field placement experiences, 
um, you're writing an article, you're attending a CTL session. You're leading a CTL session. Right, you, need to, you need to log all mm -hmm. of those activities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's just say yeah. that there's a guy <laughs> and he's- I love it, I like this guy. Hypothetically. Drinking yeah. out of a fire hose for the yes. last hour and a half. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and feels like I, I, yeah. you might need to do some of this. Yeah and is maybe concerned that he might do it wrong or leave out a whole chunk or maybe stuff's wrong to begin with. Yeah. What can that guy do? Excellent. Well, we have this great resource called the Center for Teaching and Learning on Where campus, <laughs> located in Beeman Library 100. So feel free to like reach out and we're more than happy. So that person you. could come here and yes. just be like, will you hold yes. my hand while I do yes. this? Because I'm freaking out a little yes. bit. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. I yeah. have sat down with them, yeah. especially RTP <laughs> yes. time, and they're like, what about? Yes. And we'll work through it together, so. I, I think I, like for RTP this year, I think I sat down in here with at least 12 people at the beginning of the semester. That is fantastic. Yes. Mm -hmm. What about if you are a department chair after yes. with the people mm -hmm. in your unit and learning all Yeah. Say there's a person. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to have another we're gonna training for um, in May. Yes, I, can, mm -hmm. I will tell you actually, because I was actually looking to see your you will receive an evaluation begins to late starting April 16th is when the, the switch uh, happens. And let's see. When. I, I will say I felt very overwhelmed at the beginning too, but I think yes. once you start once you start putting things in, that kind of triggers your memory like, oh, yeah, I need to remember to put this in. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I think just start when you start now and put as much in mm -hmm. as you can.